So I think we can start with the session. So a very good evening to an, every one of you. ISA VIT is proud to present another interesting tech teacher before you as a part of VIT's Tech Week 21-22. Today's topic is applications of augmented reality in interactive technology. Today, we will primarily be looking at augmented, vir augmented virtual and mixed reality. Our guest speaker today is Ms. Medha Srivastava. She is a senior software engineer at Salesforce based, of, based out of San Francisco, California. Ms. Medha is deeply interested in design and development of web, mobile, and immersive systems, AR and VR, with a focus on usability and enhanced interaction. We are glad to have you with us today. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks for the intro, Vinayak. Uh, so, hey everyone, uh, my name is Medha. As Vinayak mentioned, I work at Salesforce San Francisco. And uh, yeah, so right now I am uh, visiting India, so I'm taking the call from India itself. Uh, so, just to give a quick uh, background, uh, I did my BTEC from an IT Allahabad and then I worked in a company called D. Shaw Hyderabad for a couple of years. And then I went to uh, University of Southern California for my master's. So, like, apart from this talk, you just can feel free to reach out to me in case you have any questions about doing masters, what it's like, uh, how how taking the courses, how everything else works there, the application process, or uh, even anything generic like uh, applying for internships, job search. I would be more than happy to help. Uh, so, yeah, I'll share my LinkedIn and contact details towards the end of this talk. Uh, so let's get started. Let me uh, share my screen. That's fine. Uh, can you guys see my screen? Okay. Uh, so I'm sure most of you have already heard about these terms like augmented, virtual reality, mixed reality, and HoloLens, or especially since the recent news about uh, Metaverse, uh, that's that's all over the news and uh, where Facebook, like which is now Meta, is now showing how humans will live within a digital universe in the near future. So let's learn about what these things are, uh, but before we get started, please feel free to interrupt me or ask questions in the chat at any point of time in the talk. Like I want to make it as interactive as possible. So feel com comfortable to like put up questions. Um, so yeah, here's my Jargon Cloud or as I can call it, my Jargon Headset. So it has like uh, some of the popular terms that we use in the immersive reality world. So we are going to learn about some of these today uh, using as many examples as possible. So I want to make this session as relatable to you guys uh, based on what you've heard, what you've seen around. And uh, yeah, I'm going to show you uh, a lot of examples in this session. And yeah, drum roll please, the coolest part of this talk is towards the end. So uh, I'll show you how to build a very simple AR application. So yeah, let's get started. Um, yeah. Sorry, any questions? Okay, so if someone asked you what augmented reality or virtual reality was, uh, how would you define it in one sentence? Like you can either unmute yourself and talk or answer in the comments, that's fine. Like just to get you started just as a, uh, yeah, let me know in the chat or how much background do you guys have in this? I'll wait a couple of minutes. Okay. okay. Artificial world. Interaction between real and virtual world. Very nice. Anyone else? The matrix, interesting. Interactive experience of a real world environment. 
quite close, quite close. Cool, looks like uh, you guys have some some idea, some uh, brief idea about these things. You All of you have heard about these. So uh, yeah, here's how I define these terms. So we'll go over uh, all of these one by one. So starting with virtual reality, it uh, virtual reality is something that simply replaces your world with a virtual one. So when you put on a VR headset like this in the <laughs> photo that I've, I'm sharing, uh, your view of the real world is completely blocked. So you're immersed in a digital 3D world. So for example, when you put on a VR headset, you can't see anything that's there in the real world. And you're totally immersed in a digital 3D world. So as an example, it's like uh, attending a virtual concert or uh, even playing a VR game or just imagine like you putting on the headset and then you uh, you can you teleport it to Mars. You look around, you have the Mars terrain, you can walk around and uh, explore. Uh, yeah, so that is uh, virtual reality. We that's that's completely digital uh, environment and we have uh, absolutely no uh, no context or uh, you cannot see the real world at all. Uh, has anyone here played the VR game called Beat Saber? So I'm a big fan of that game and uh, it I totally love that one. So it's a VR game where you put on your VR headset and then you select a song and then you, you so with any VR headset, there are like two controllers. So in, in that case, in that game, you uh, select a song and then using the controllers, you have to slash through the beats that are coming up in front of you. So let me uh, quickly show you guys just to, uh, yeah. So yeah, as you can see, it's uh, super immersive, super entertaining, and I mean, I spend hours and hours on this, like without. It looks like this. Star Wars Jedi thing. Uh, yeah, kind of similar. So, so the uh, the controllers are somewhat like the. Uh, so Light yeah, 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 pretty cool. Quite awesome. So. Right. So this is this is one of the things that I really like. And apart from this, there's a uh, Google Earth VR. So uh, you can just like like we have Google Earth for the web. We have it for the VR itself. And uh, they've scanned like different places on Earth properly. And uh, like many places I've just visited in VR, I just put on the headset. I just select like, OK, let me explore. Let me go to this particular place. And you just keep zooming in and it's it's pretty realistic, like honestly telling. So whenever you get a chance, like explore these things and whenever you get a hold of a VR headset. Um, cool, any questions? Okay. Next, coming to augmented reality. So uh, how it's different from virtual reality is that here you're able to see the physical world as well. So AR allows us to merge the digital and physical worlds. Basically, it's like uh, overlaying of virtual content over the physical world in a way that uh, it makes it seem like the content is physically present there. So uh, here are like some different types of AR that we have. And, and just to let you know, like AR is not a very uh, new technology. It has been there since like, it's it's very old, but like with the smartphones and everything becoming ubiquitous with us uh, using these like quite more often, uh, the adaptation has become like pretty good recently. So so this marker based AR technology is one of the oldest where we uh, we have like anything in the physical world that uh, can be scanned using a camera and that so so a pattern like this or a marker like this. Uh, is replaced by some 3D uh, content or any information that can be embedded in the digital world. So when you're looking through your uh, camera in your smartphone, uh, that that particular code is replaced by a model or something. 
And then there's markerless AR technology where you simply like uh, overlay information in the real world without uh, scanning anything, like without scanning a particular code, but it's like maybe it can replace an object or maybe it can just uh, overlay information in the real world. But, uh, but yeah, there's nothing, uh, no specific code that has to be scanned. And another one is projection-based augmented reality. Here, uh, I mean, it's uh, this one doesn't understand the uh, physical nature of the objects in the real world. It just uh, based based on the projections, and then you can have like some sensors like this in the one uh, in the picture here, and you can just use these to interact with uh, whatever digital information is uh, projected. And finally, there's one called superimposition based augmented reality. Here, this is the one where you actually understand what's there in the physical uh, environment and you overlay information according to the physical environment. This is very contextual and this, this involves like understanding of the uh, physical environment. So in this case, like for example, the road has this overlay and as the road turns, this, this is going to turn. Uh, and yeah. This is very contextual. So th this is like uh, these demarcations, these these uh, different types of AR are not like very well demarcated. This is just like different kinds of AR technology that we had in the future, had in the past, and we'll have in the future. Yeah. So uh, coming to mixed reality, uh, I'm sure like this is a very vague area, and mixed reality is a term that was coined by Microsoft recently when it uh, launched its headset called Microsoft HoloLens. So this is uh, where the real and virtual objects coexist and interact in the real time. So as you saw in, uh, in augmented reality, it was just a like projection kind of thing. But, but here the digital objects can't actually interact with the uh, real world. We can interact with the digital uh, objects, but Digital objects cannot interact with the real world, if you understand what I mean here. So you'll understand more once I give a few examples. So it's like uh, when the digital objects actually understand the physical boundaries of a real world and are able to interact with the, and we are able to interact with the digital objects in a natural way. So imagine like you put on a headset and there's a balloon that uh, is there in the virtual world and that goes up and it understands that, OK, this is the ceiling of the room. And then it goes and stops there. So it's some something like that. It understands the physical boundaries. And it understands the physics of the real world. Um, so yeah, Microsoft HoloLens is a mixed reality headset. And let me show you a quick video to understand. This is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Which one? Cool. Let's let's see. So just to tell, this is like from this is six years ago, and like this was their vision like six years ago. And imagine where it might have reached right now. I'm just showing you just to make you understand like uh, what mixed reality is. Okay. This need to go beyond the screen. <laughs> where the digital world is blended to your real world. Now we can. This is the world with holograms. What will they enable us to do? New ways to visualize our work. Do you have an idea for this whole time? New ways to share ideas with each other. He's going Just put the images in one drawer. Okay. More immersive ways to play. New ways to teach and learn. So put the new trap in the place of the old one. No. And tighten here and here. New ways to collaborate and explore the places we've never been. This formation. Let's take a closer look. A new ways to create the thing you can imagine. We 
that you change the way you see the world, you can change the world you see. Amazing, right? Uh, yeah, so apart from the coolness factor, there are super useful applications that we can develop with HoloLens. And uh, you guys must be curious, like, how does all this actually work? Uh, so here's a closer look of HoloLens. I, uh, I, I'll explain to you. So it, it uses a system of cameras uh to and um, to actually scan the environment around you and understand like what's what's there how are the physical boundaries uh so this this one is like an rgb camera and there are some these are some like depth sensor depth sensing cameras um and there's a small projector in the front that uh, that actually projects information on these smart glasses that are there right in front of your eyes and uh, and yeah there's also a microphone and speaker towards the back and and yeah not to forget this is like microsoft hololens is like a fully standalone headset as compared to uh, virtual reality headsets or uh, even augmented reality when we use phone or uh, or any uh, digital device so this one doesn't need any connectivity from a computer or laptop it it has its whole processing unit everything inside of the headset and that's what makes uh, like the first version of hololens was pretty bulky because it uh, it had all the processing unit and everything but yeah it's it's improving like we have hololens 2 right now which was released by microsoft pretty recently and like in the coming future it, it's going to become more and more portable more and more lightweight and comfortable to wear and and yeah you'll be just walking around with one of these on your head so uh, so I'll, i i got the chance to have some experience with hololens and i'll uh, i'll just show a small video like in order to demonstrate how it's uh, how it's like to build for uh, hololens and what i did so i did this project during my masters where uh, it's so i thought that maybe it's it's important to not just use it for just for the sake of using it but to actually build something that's useful for uh, that's actually useful and uh, that's pretty good for uh, for any social cause also so it's um, it's an mr application that i developed like mixed reality application that i developed for people with hearing disabilities so specifically for the people who are using american sign language so my application what it does is it uh, it so imagine a hearing disabled so imagine i am hearing disabled i'm uh, talking to someone right in front of me and i'm not able to understand what that person is saying and for understanding i need uh, i need to decipher the uh, the sign language but what if the person right uh, in front of me who is talking to me doesn't know sign language so so this is something that will translate the uh, the conversation that's happening to sign language in real time uh, so as you can see like once i put on the headset it just goes around and uh, i just scan everything so it it's it's something called spatial mapping so as i move my head around in the room and uh, look at the different objects what hololens does is it uh, creates a kind of 3d model inside that uh, that is a replication of the real world and it it stores the surfaces everything in the 3d model like just by a single scan and then after the surfaces are scanned i can just use uh, any I, I can just use some gestures to spawn something here Hi, how are you? So like there are, uh, so this is like the learn mode where you actually want to learn the uh, hand signals, but there's a converse mode also where a bot spa spawns right in like beside the person who's speaking and then translates, uh, does a real time translation, somewhat similar to what you see in news channels. Uh, 
Yeah, so let's, uh, let's go ahead with some of the applications of augmented reality. Uh, yeah, and in the following slides, I'll, uh, I'll just try to go through some of the uh, examples that we can relate to. Uh, so first one is retail. This is the most common use case. Uh, so imagine going to supermarket, you're picking up some item and then you, uh, you get some nutritional information right in uh, front of it. Like, uh, or, or maybe something like how much of it is in stock or, uh, or yeah, any, any kind of information that you would like to, uh, embed that you would like normally you might need some Google search or something, but this is, this information is right in front of your eyes. Uh, another use case is if, uh, if you're doing a shopping from an inventory, this is probably like Ikea or something, um, uh, you can pre-add the items and then you can just walk through the aisles and you, it will just tell that, okay, you can pick up this item from here, this item from here, you can go in this direction. Um, yeah, another one is retail. I think some of the apps already have this thing. Uh, I, I was buying some furniture recently and I saw that, okay, it has the AR mode. So, uh, so you just like click on the item that you need to buy and then you can see how it fits, uh, whether it fits well in your uh, physical environment itself before buying these things off. And another one is shopping yeah you can you can just virtually try out different things uh sitting at home or even like when you're going shopping when there are different models of something you can just try them out and see and select and see like what looks good on you uh second sector is education or training so you you guys can relate to this yeah <laughs> i mean uh, studying in class 11th 12th this is so hard to like learn chemistry, like basic things that uh, that are there, like understanding how a particular bond is made or uh, how a compound looks like. So for example, we can have different cards and then as you rotate the card, the 3D model rotates uh, and then you can view the, uh, the bonds and everything from different angles. And you can probably like, there are multiple cards and maybe one for hydrogen, one for oxygen, and then you combine and uh, like keep them together. And it shows that, okay, this is the compound that is, uh, that's built when you get these things together. So yeah, I mean, it's an interesting way to learn and it's, uh, it's, it's, it gives a different perspective for things, uh, especially for biology students, uh, learning the uh, internal structure of something or, uh, yeah, I mean, looking at different angles, learning exactly uh, exactly where each part is because these things are very difficult to understand in a 2D uh, kind of interface like textbooks or even images. Uh, yeah, for training, I mean, imagine some uh, carpentry being done and then you you have the exact measurements but then when you uh, when you actually have to go ahead and cut cut something you uh, you and keep measuring it so just imagine like an overlay kind of thing uh, which will which will assist you which will it can also be used for training like if you're uh, joining something in a different angle it might like show a red indicator or uh, it it'll have like a kind of lines projected on your on the thing that you're working on and then it will assist you in order to do your job properly and there are some applications with respect to military as well so uh, so this is these things are used especially vr it's it's used a lot in uh, in training for military especially people who come back uh, from uh, from a war or something they they get like, like this ptsd which is post traumatic stress disorder so in order to recover from that, there are like multiple games that uh, they have to undergo, like they, they have to uh, go through that experience in order to uh, feel better about it. Um, yeah, and then obviously you guys know about Snapchat filters. It's nothing but augmented reality. You move your head, it, it augments something and then you, uh, as you move your head, it just stays there. So it understands maybe like, uh, like in the background, there's computer vision, there's all kinds of things that are running in order to understand like the real world, but, 
but like whatever projection is made it just uh, stays even when you're moving so so yeah this is like a very very common example of augmented reality that we've all used uh, something like google this is i think from google lens or i'm i'm not sure but uh, you hold your camera and it shows that okay this far uh, this particular thing is there you can find restaurants or uh, any any kind of things that you use google maps for so yeah it, it even shows directions uh, when you're trying to navigate and uh, yeah, imagine virtual meetings, especially like all of us are going through this uh, remote work condition. You guys are taking classes online. It's sometimes very difficult to understand uh, understand something when you're actually not physically present in that uh, atmosphere. So here, here is something, some some kind of project or something that everybody is looking at. Or you can even imagine like uh, meetings where some people are virtually present as 3D models. Uh, and then you can interact with them yep and of course who recognizes this any answers which game is it guys pokemon, pokemon go. go of course of course pokemon <laughs> go <laughs> everyone has been there <laughs> yeah so pokemon go very very good example of location based ar uh, you you have some digital uh, objects that are hidden in different parts of the uh, different parts of the world and then you just have to go and fetch them yeah pretty interesting and this is uh, this is a game called roboraid that i've played on hololens so it's it's basically very quick like you just put on your uh, hololens you just scan your room and it understands like what uh, what walls are uh, what are the surfaces and then it uh, makes holes in your walls and then there are robots coming out of the holes like cracks on the wall and they're shooting at you and you basically you have to dodge and then like shoot them shoot them back yeah so pretty interesting right uh, any questions so far anything at all uh, do you have any idea how um uh, mixed reality can be used to treat diseases like cancer and all treat diseases like cancer like find a solution for cancer like that i must uh i mean it it definitely helps in some surgeries so uh so for example if you're sitting in if the surgeon is sitting in some other room there are like robot assisted surgeries that uh that are very precise and they're, they're uh, being done right now. Uh, so imagine you're sitting, there's another console and a robot is operating and then you're, you're guiding, you're uh, giving instructions to that. But I mean, for treating diseases, I think uh, especially, uh, I mean, it's, it's good for training, it's good for medical training, it's uh, good for everything, but I don't think right now there's a way that we can treat something i mean it's it's just basically an a way to assist what humans are already doing but it cannot totally replace something or it cannot uh, at least right now i'm not aware of uh, any any solution for that yeah yeah okay thank you Cool. So let's jump to the exciting part. What's the time? It's 5.37. Okay. Uh, so I'll demonstrate how you can create an AR app. So the main piece of software that we'll be using today is something called Unity, which is a game development engine, which is used by a lot of different games. Like when you, when you download from the Play Store or App Store, you see that like a screen called Unity comes up whenever you try to load a game. Uh, so yeah, I've, I would have loved to do this as a hands-on workshop, but I think this needs some basic setup on your computers to get started. So if any of you already have like Unity installed, you can just follow these steps to develop with me. Otherwise, I mean, it's, it's even good, good to follow as I speak and uh, you can try it on your own after the talk. I can, I can share these steps later on. Uh, yeah, so to download Unity, you can just go to unity3d.com but i i already have it installed so uh, yeah i can i can quickly go through these steps uh, so 
yeah uh, i'll start with creating a new project here so right now i'm on my mac and i'm using unity hub uh, i'm not used to this i i always use windows but the interface might be a little different depending on which uh, os you're using but mostly the uh, the steps are going to be the same and you can just uh, i think it's it's very easy to figure that out so let me create one from the templates this is not super important like you can use any of the templates right now this is a very basic simple app that i'm creating and let's call it arvit Any of you have used Unity before? Uh, yes. Okay. okay. Actually, okay. I made a, a basic AR app, uh, you know, a few weeks ago only. Oh, awesome. Awesome. That's great. And that's why I, I, you know, joined I this conversation. Awesome. I want to take I'm very interested in AR. <laughs> Amazing. What did you build? A uh, very basic, you know, cube, uh, which could be uh, placed in the air. I mean, basic AR app. Was... Got it. Got it. Yeah. 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 Feel free to share anything or uh, correct me <laughs> if I'm wrong anywhere. I'm, I'm uh, like doing this after a long time. Uh, cool. So this is how Unity 3D looks like. Uh, so we have something called scenes here. So scene is where you have all the assets, the logic, and it's basically a space for any part of application. So you can imagine something like uh, you in any game, any one particular level is like a scene in, in created in Unity. Uh, and imagine you click on a button and then another scene loads or another level of uh, the game loads. So we have some basic objects here that are created by default. There's directional light. Okay, let me let me just go and create a new scene in Unity. So you can use either of them, like basic or empty. This this call is being recorded, right? Yes, yes, it is getting recorded. Okay, okay, awesome. So you can just uh, go through this like even after we talk. Yeah. So I'll create a basic set, basic uh, like. Uh, scene in Unity, and you can see that there are some default objects called camera and directional light. So, uh, so these are already present there, and any any kind of application that we develop, especially AR application, does require like a camera and uh, and yeah, there are many use cases, many many kinds of applications that you can develop using Unity. It can be a simple game, it can be a VR app, it can be like any Android. Uh, anything, anything that involves like uh, even importing some three D models, some assets, some images, videos, and uh, putting them all together. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah. Let me just talk about some controls here. So uh, I have my hand tool here. You can basically select it and uh, pan in the scene. I don't have my mouse here, but uh, it's generally recommended to uh, use Unity with mouse. Uh, so yeah, this is like a simple pan tool, and at least in uh, in Mac, you can use the you can click Option plus panning to like rotate through the scene. And and yeah, you can. I'm not sure if you can see what key I'm pressing, but I'm pressing Option key. Trust me. And uh, there's. Uh, you can click on control and just move around. Like this is like a zoom option when you press control. Uh, so yeah, these are the basic uh, things on Unity. There are many tutorials that are available online in case you want to get started with development for Unity. Uh, but for now, let's uh, stay focused on uh, AR, AR app. Yeah. So. What we're going to use today is something called Euphoria, which is like an augmented reality development kit. So it has like all uh, all the uh, 
the logic for computer vision or scanning or mapping everything like inbuilt and uh, this is already provided it's it's available for free uh, so let me let me just see before we are So you can go to the Euphoria website and there's an option called add or update Euphoria engine to your Unity project. So I think in some of the uh, versions for Unity, uh, I'm not sure which one I'm using, but uh, in some of them, you can uh, choose Euphoria while installing itself. So you can just verify like by going to uh, game object and there should be an option called Euphoria. But in case you don't have that, you can just uh, follow these steps that I'm telling, like add or update before your engine to your Unity project. So let me go ahead and click on this. And then I want to add, yeah. Oops, I didn't read the terms and conditions. I've read that before, don't worry. So, so I think, uh, Am I already logged in? Yeah, so before uh, downloading or doing anything on Vephoria online, you need to create an account. Uh, but I think that's free, so and that should be like very simple steps to create an account online. And this is the file that I downloaded. It's basically a Unity package. So once I click on this, it's going to open Unity, and it will allow me to like add the Vephoria package to my current Unity app. So let me go ahead and import this. So I think Euphoria is already added here. There's some warning, but let's try to ignore that. Yeah. Uh, so, so when you go to game object now, you can see that there's something called Euphoria engine here. Uh, just verify that once you're done with installation. And then, uh, and yeah, let me uh, go to Euphoria engine and uh, add an AR camera. Uh, yeah, so once I have the AR camera, I can go ahead and delete the main camera because I don't really need it right now. I should be good with an AR camera here. Uh, I can leave the light here, I think. It doesn't matter. Uh, and yeah, so there's, there's another thing called uh, image target. So I went ahead and added image target. So image target is basically uh, something in the uh, digital, like I'm, I'm adding this target in the digital world that will be equivalent to what I'm going to scan in the real world. So, uh, so I have added the image target. Just follow through these steps, just trust the process and then you'll be able to see the result. Uh, so yeah, if I see the inspector panel, it says something like make sure to set up Euphoria license key in order to create image targets. So I think we need to go to the Euphoria uh, website and then okay. So so go to AR camera and then you can uh, you see an option called Open Euphoria Engine Configuration. So I see that there's no license key added here. So let's let's click on this add license. And let me create a new license for our project here. So I mean, creating a license and uh, like all these things are free. 
in view Korea. So I'm just just create one, and then I should have the license key. So let's copy this one and add it here. So right now you can see that. Uh, let's try to zoom in. This my camera. So this is my uh, image target, the white plane kind of thing that's there here. It's a little difficult without the mouse. Let's try. Yeah, so right now you can see that the image target, which is basically a, an image plane, it's blank because uh, there's no target that's here, attached here. So what we need to do is uh, add our own target there. So I'll go back to the before your online page and then go to target manager. So I'll create a new database for my uh, app that I'm developing today. So let's call it ARVIT. So I have like a playing card with me and I've already scanned it and kept it, uh, kept like scanned it and I have the file ready. So you guys can use like any, any, uh, any image or any, uh, any card or anything that you have uh, and scan and keep. So I'm going to add that as a target in before yeah. Uh, so, uh, so I created my database. So there are different kinds of targets that are here and I can create like, uh, depending upon what object I'm trying to scan, I have to choose the target. So let's, let's see, let's uh, click on single image here and then let me select the green image that I scanned. And so this is the width of the object in the real world. So this is what about seven six to seven centimeters so let me just write 0 0.07 and i'll add this target yeah and uh, and yeah as you can see this viewphoria just like once i upload uh, what I want to scan, uh, it it shows me a rating of how good this uh, particular target is, uh, how how well it will work with augmented reality. So if you just uh, click on this, it's it's going sh to show you the different features. So show features. So basically, it uses these particular points in order to track your uh, object or in order to like identify it quite well. So because it has so many features, oops. Yeah, because it has so many features, it has even a very good rating to this. So let's uh, go ahead and download the database. Right now, I, I have like just one picture. So let's download it for Unity Editor. And I will download it here. So when I open the Unity package, similar to what I did with Euphoria, uh, it it'll ask me to import all these uh, assets that are there. Uh, yeah. So the next thing we need to do is uh, like tell when this image is recognized by the AR camera. Like what information or graphic do you want to superimpose? So. Okay, before that, yeah, we, we need to uh, assign that particular image to our target here. Uh, so, so when you uh, when you try to select the image here, it will show up the uh, asset that we just added. Uh, so you can see that the image, the blank uh, image is replaced by the image that I scanned. And, and yeah, next thing, uh, so this is the image that I'm actually going to scan in the real world. But then what is the uh, content, the digital content that I'm going to replace it with? So let's go to image target and create another like 3D object called quad. And so this should be a child of the image target. Um, so yeah, I think, uh, 
it's added here, but it's like a pretty big as compared to the image target. So let's like, first of all, let's rotate it so that it aligns with the uh, image. And then we try to like scale it down somewhat like. Let's try to zoom in and see if it aligns with my image. It will be much easier once you use a mouse. Yeah. So the, the size of the cord and size of the image target both had the same here. And, and yeah, so uh, as we assigned an image to the image target, we need to assign something to the cord as well, because that is what is going to display my augmented information. So let me uh, import some videos here. So I just go to like, I have some videos automatically like downloaded before the talk. And let me go to assets. And the sim simplest way you can import a video in Unity is to just drag and drop in the assets folder. So I'll drop a couple of videos here. Let's see if they're here. Yeah. And I can just confirm by clicking on the play button. So you can see the the video is working completely fine. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, and then the last thing I have to do is assign that to my cord. So I add a component. I search for video player here. So I added video player uh, to my cord. So this is basically whenever you try to add a component, it basically attaches a script to that particular object so that it's able to play that uh, kind of component. So for example, when, when I attach like a video player to the cord, it's, uh, it should be able to play a video. So right now there's no video clip, but because we have already added something here, so let me select the video one that we added. Uh, yeah, and I think let's, let's see how it goes. Let's try it out. So I have my card here and see it will play a video. So like bringing it again in the picture, it's, it's a basic uh, queen card, but you guys can see my screen, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so like just to show you again. My laptop is a little slow to do so. But yeah. So similar to this, like you can you can just uh, you can see how how it's following the card and it's uh, playing the video here. I think it also has a sound, but uh, right now I don't think you can hear it. But like uh, so, this is in the Unity Play option. But once you like uh, actually export it as an Android app or like uh, and uh, an iOS app or anything from the Unity, uh, like build the package and then export it. You can install it on your phone and then you can just hold the camera and uh, it'll it'll replace whatever uh, whatever physical object that you have with some digital information. So yeah, that's that's all that I had to show today. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions. Just uh, reach out. Later. Hope that was useful, informative. Uh, yep. Thanks, everyone. And here's my uh, LinkedIn profile and uh, and yeah, my email ID. So feel free to reach out with any questions and like. Sorry. Uh, even now, like we can have the QA and Q and A session right now. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Can we uh, combine AI applications like, uh, you know, for example, algorithms and OpenCV TensorFlow libraries, that stuff with AR? Definitely. So, uh, sorry, I'll share, share my screen again. So, Unity platform is basically like anything like your uh, 
any any kind of development platform so we we have scripts like this didn't require any scripts uh, the example that i showed you a very simple one but when we uh, develop some games or uh, any other applications we we write our own scripts so it can be uh, written in any uh, so there should be an option for adding scripts here so you can like uh, write your own c sharp scripts javascript or any any other uh, scripting library and uh, and definitely like there are uh, for for every ai uh, kind of like any ml algorithm or anything you can directly write or there are packages that you can import here so uh, definitely anything that you can do like uh, normally you can just add it here and that's how i think all the uh, uh, smart games and everything are developed on these platforms no actually i was familiar with the scripting but i thought that only c sharp scripting is available in unity but now you just mentioned that we can write scripts in other languages also so yes yeah, yeah for sure for yeah. sure so uh, okay my doubt is clear thank you any other questions anything at all how how do you guys feel the session was or anything that uh, i could have added i can like you can reach out to me and i can provide more details Um, hey, I am new to this uh, AI thing. If I have to start it from the beginning, can you show me a guide like the path which should I follow to, you know, to start it? Like a roadmap. Yeah, kind of that. A uh, roadmap for what? Would you repeat that? Full learning AI. Yeah. Like I'm new to it. Okay, okay. So, uh, so I think this is one of the simplest things that you could have tried, but. Uh, I think the very basic uh, thing that you have to do when you're developing augmented and virtual reality apps is uh, like, first of all, choose a development platform or a game gaming engine that you are comfortable with. It can be like, I'm very comfortable with Unity, for example. So get started with like uh, basic tutorials for Unity, build some simple apps and, and then, yeah, like apart from like, uh, for example, I replaced it with a video. Just try it with a 3D model. You can find some 3D models online and just try to uh, download the models as assets. Or uh, like you can you can keep uh, proceeding ahead from the simplest application to a more complicated one. So as uh, Harsh mentioned, like integrating some AI components in that, or uh, making it smart, making it like making multiple scenes in Unity where each scene. Uh, is an AR based scene. And then you have some information in first scene, which is carry forwarded to the second scene, something like that. So there are various uh, online courses as well that are available for free. Also, you can go through like uh, YouTube tutorials and I, I think that's, that's how I learned. So, uh, I mean, spe specifically with these things, uh, the more practice you do or the more practical applications you just pick up, pick up a project think about some ideas like look around yourself and think like how uh, in this particular scenario ai could have helped and uh, break them down into simple pieces and try to implement that on your own actually the thing is i have ideas but i don't have the information to implement them yet okay okay yeah uh, yeah i mean you have to start simple. That's the thing. So once you have the ideas, I mean, there, there are even I have a lot of ideas, but there are some restrictions, some uh, maybe hardware limitations or some software limitations every time when we are trying to implement something. But uh, yeah, just keep those ideas in your mind and uh, like get started with the basics, basic things uh, like have a, a very good hold of the basics, try to develop applications like iteratively, like go to a more difficult level and then uh, maybe, or, or I mean, if you want, you can reach out to me offline and I can help you with some of that. Okay, thanks a lot.
Any other questions? Uh, it would be great if you could, uh, you know, share your LinkedIn account or email so that we could contact you. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I had that in my. Uh, let me let me share that here also in the chat. Okay. Feel free to reach out for any any kind of advice, any kind of questions that you that you might have. Uh, if nobody has any other doubts, I think we can wrap this up. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am, for an amazing session. And all of you guys, uh, please thank her, and you can reach out to her in the link given. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Was... Thank you, ma'am. Yeah.